norske frivillige begynte. Takk for deres innsats og for at dere gjør alt dette for oss alle. Det norske folket er nødt til å yte slike oppre, fortsatte han. Og om ikke hele folket vil oppre, så må det være noen som er villige til å oppre for at vi alle vil gi alt godt og heil og seil på ferden. That beautiful footage is of the Volunteer Norwegian Legion from 1942. Here you can clearly see a soldier's color tab displaying the Norwegian lion holding an axe. Today we'll continue with part two of the series as we follow the unit through their basic training which had a strong emphasis on both physical fitness and political indoctrination. A series of bad decisions on the part of the German High Command affected the morale of the Legion and eventually caused their originally successful recruitment campaign to stall. With basic training completed, the unit was finally ready for active duty. Their assigned region of deployment would come as a nasty surprise. This video brings together a controversial historical topic, rare stock film footage, and an original map to tie it all together. It's like Christmas and my birthday all rolled into one. If you like the way I combine primary source materials to tell a story, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see additional footage that can't be shown here, go to military1945.com and create an account. Eventually, there will be a full video on demand channel there. You won't be disappointed, I promise. To entice new recruits, they were signing short three-month trial enlistments. The unit was being billed by Norwegian fascist Quisling as the new Norwegian army, and had been intended to be organized as such. Those that had military experience in the former Norwegian army were especially interesting to the Germans. Det melder seg stadig flere til den norske legionen. On the 29th of July, 1941, the first 300 Norwegian volunteers arrived in Kiel, Germany, and were then sent on to Feilingbostel training camp for basic training. The officers were sent to Lauenburg. By the end of August, the total number of recruits had grown to over 700, and by the end of 1941, it had a strength of 1,218 men, with an additional reserve battalion provided for replacement. That it was quietly placed within the hierarchy of Himmler's SS and issued standard SS rather than Norwegian uniforms was an unpleasant surprise to some, but the truth is, after the first three-month period in the fall, most decided to re-enlist anyway. In order to join the Norwegian Legion, the volunteers needed to prove their Nordic ancestry and be free of physical disabilities. The relatively limited amount of advanced military training was meant to be compensated by a heavy focus on physical fitness and ideological indoctrination. They were being trained to operate as aggressive assault infantry, or Stoßtruppen. As stated in the Waffen-SS training manual, sport arouses belligerence, hardens the will, promotes self-discipline, and therefore promotes the training of the SS man to the level of a combat effective fighter. The indoctrination was based on the National Socialist worldview, which pitted the idealized Germanic and Nordic cultures and the supposedly superior Aryan gene pool against what they considered barbaric and inferior Judeo-Bolshevism. This film, titled In Battle Against the Enemy of the World, has a runtime of 88 minutes. It follows the history of the German Legion Condor as it fought in the Spanish Civil War. The propaganda illustrates the dangers of international Bolshevism. It was a kind of ideological religion where loyalty, courage, and self-sacrifice were the commandments. Disloyalty was the worst sin. The war in the East was presented as a crusade, a fight to the death between the forces of good and evil.
the SS had planned to form a full German-style infantry regiment of three brigades with historic Norse names. The first named Viking, with the majority of the recruits coming from the Oslo area. The second would be called Gula, and the third Frosta. This is nice Norwegian footage from a late 1941 newsreel showing the Norwegian Legion during a training exercise on a ski patrol. The recruiting campaign that had started out so well had lost some of its shine. Among the volunteers, it became common knowledge that the German high command fully expected the war against the Soviet Union to be over by Christmas, which left the future of the Legion in question. The Legion's officers and NCOs were all Norwegians, but German advisors were detailed to the units. Officially, they had no command authority, but some of them tried to acquire some, which caused a considerable amount of friction. In addition, the majority of the equipment and weaponry being issued, none of which being heavy, was either old or captured. Clearly, rather than being made into an effective frontline fighting force, the unit was being used entirely for its propaganda value. By the end of 1941, hundreds of men were leaving as soon as their initial three-month term was up, including their first commander, the Norwegian Army Colonel Finn Hannibal Kielstrup. Kielstrup's place was taken by the Viking Battalion Commander Jorgen Baka, but within two weeks he too resigned in disgust. This was not what the Legionnaires had signed up for, and the unanimously unpopular decisions had a materially negative effect on the influx of new recruits. Due to the lack of volunteers, the Gula and Frosta brigades would never be formed. Not until December of 1941 was much needed stability brought to the Legion when Norwegian ex-cavalry officer Arthur Kvist took over its leadership. Then, eight months after the Norwegian Legion's formation, with basic training completed, everything suddenly fell into place. There was an excitement in the air, as the exact location as to where the unit was to be deployed had been kept a secret. In February of 1942, a fleet of Ju-52 transport planes arrived to the Tfalingbostel training camp and literally, as the soldiers were being loaded on, they learned that rather than being deployed in Finland as promised, they were being flown to the northeast over the occupied Baltic states and would take up positions in the zigzag of trenches around the besieged city of Leningrad. In addition, they would be under the command of German officers as part of the 2nd SS Brigade. Any illusion that the young legionnaires might still have had, now most certainly must have fallen away completely. In the next video in the series, we'll continue with the map and introduce the 2nd SS Brigade and talk about the Norwegian Legion's Baptism of Fire. Remember to take a look at military1945.com and sign up to stay informed. Thanks for watching.